the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at www.beautyprofessor.net. Today I'm excited to share my May favorites, and as always, I'll be covering products from the hair care, skin care, as well as cosmetics categories. And I will attempt to do that as succinctly as possible. As hair care goes, I've had the opportunity to try a host of new products and because I'm somebody who washes their hair daily, I just can't stand the feeling of hair that's not clean. I run through shampoos and conditioners fairly quickly and while my hair is fairly low maintenance, I do utilize some hair styling products, a couple of which I'll be talking about today. The first item I want to mention in the hair care category is the Philip B. Round Brush. This brush is made of non-endangered boar hair bristles and has a very light wooden base. It's a super quality brush, well crafted, and I really like the way that it brushes the tangles out of my hair. I've been using this in conjunction with the tangle teaser that I have discussed in previous videos, and that's been working really nicely to move through my hair. Also, as a round brush, it's great for when you're blow drying or applying any kind of hair styling technique to the hair because it really just grasps it nicely and allows the air if you're using a blow dryer to just evenly distribute throughout the hair. I've been in situations where I've had stylists actually use round brushes as a blow drying technique. I've not yet tried that with this single brush but I'm excited to give it a go down the line. Next is the Chroma Studio Shine Spray. And I've been using a lot of products from the Chroma Studio line this last month, but the Shine Spray is the one I wanted to include without question in this video for a couple of reasons. The Chroma line is based in West Hollywood, and so it's local to Southern California. The line has all types of hair products, but I use Shine Spray fairly regularly. One, it helps to detangle, and two, it also adds shine, as the name would imply. And this is a super light version of that. It has the most intoxicating scent. It's kind of sweet and fruity, almost like watermelon, but less pronounced than that. It also has a list of fantastic ingredients, which I'll be covering on the blog soon. It's just a really high quality shine spray, and I'll just demonstrate a misting. It's really finely misted, and it just makes the hair so shiny and silky and manageable. I like to use it after washing and conditioning, of course, once my hair is dried, either with the blow dryer or air dried as I prefer most of the time. Then when I'm brushing, I spray some of this preemptively and maybe a little more afterwards and it just makes your hair like silk. So this is the Chroma Studio Shine Spray. And finally, for a treatment, I've been loving the Moroccan Oil Restorative Hair Mask. This mask comes in a rather rotund little container here and it looks like this. There is a shield on top. But the hair mask itself is so rich. If you've ever had an experience with Moroccan oil, it relies upon argan oil to restore and rebalance the hair. The hair mask is like the Moroccan oil effect on steroids. I like to use it once a week after washing and conditioning my hair. There's a couple of ways you can use this. You can apply it actually after washing your hair, come out of the shower, put it on your hair for 10 minutes, and then go back into the shower, rinse it, follow with conditioner. For me, that's not entirely time effective, but I found I get great results from washing my hair in the shower, then adding a bit of conditioner, and then slathering a decent amount of this on the ends of my hair, which is where I want to focus most on repair. Then while I do the other things in the shower, I need to do like shaving and exfoliating, I just let this sit on the hair, and then I rinse it out at the end of the shower, and my hair has been washed and conditioned and masked, all in the context of a single shower. So I am really impressed with how this works, and if you're not into using an oil on a regular basis, I would say your hair will still definitely benefit from using this oil enriched product as a weekly treatment. Now on to skincare. In terms of skincare, I've been trying a variety of products, especially since the weather's gotten so warm in Southern California. The air has been dry a few days out of the month and then it gets really humid and so I'm just working on adjusting my skincare to meet the needs of my skin as well as to kind of coincide with the weather. And here are a few of the products I used a lot of in May. Kate, one is the Kate Somerville 
eczema therapy cream. Now, up front, I do not have eczema, and while this cream has the word eczema in the title, you do not need to have been diagnosed with that condition to get benefit from it. It's a super rich, unscented cream. It's infused with colloidal oatmeal. It just targets my dry skin, specifically on my legs, instantly. While I may not have eczema, I am extremely sensitive, and I also am allergic to grass. So when I'm crawling around outside, especially taking pictures for the blog, I often am exposed to grass, which makes me really itchy, and then that creates extra dryness. So this is amazing. It absorbs instantly, and I love the flip top applicator and a squeeze tube because that will ensure you get every last bit of it. It just feels great on the skin and really a little bit goes a long way. So if you're thinking about using this as a body lotion and thinking, oh my gosh, I'll run through this really quickly, I found that like a quarter size amount maximum will cover my arms and my legs when I get out of the shower and I always moisturize right after that. And so I envision this lasting me for a decent amount of time before I need to re Some extra reinforcement for the body, I'm loving the bio oil. And this is a product I was introduced to actually early last month, so I've had a few weeks to experiment with it. It's got something called purcellin oil in it, which is proprietary to bio oil, and it helps to let the skin absorb the oil in a really immediate way and then kind of hold it there so the moisture is really long lasting. You can use it for a host of conditions like scars and stretch marks, even skin tone, um, aging skin, dehydrated skin. It's there to basically be a multi-purpose oil and it has a very light aroma. It is infused with chamomile so I can detect that. It's safe enough to even use on your face if you prefer. You can use it on your eyelashes to moisturize, your cuticles. It's just a jack of all trades and it's something that's available at most local drugstores. So I highly recommend the bio oil and I know I'll be using it all summer long for moisturizing as well as a really subtle glow. I'm an avid high heel wearer during the school year and my heels in turn take quite a beat and have a propensity towards being quite dry. So to combat that I've been working with the Amlactin foot cream. This is pretty heavy duty stuff. I put it on my I put it on my heels after a shower. Oftentimes I like to apply a slathering of it and then actually wear socks for the night, especially on cooler evenings, and just let it soak into my feet all night. And my feet truly have improved from using this. This is another great drugstore product, so it's easily accessible and really affordable. But it has alpha hydroxy acids, which, which I think work in tandem with the moisturizers to kind of slough off any excess unwanted dry skin, which ultimately reveals smoother skin in the process. For feet that are really callous and dry like mine are, and I'm not particularly proud of admitting that on camera, but it's the truth, the Amlactin has been a lifesaver for me. So I definitely recommend this. And then for the face, gosh, I've tried a variety of products this month. I'm only going to mention two in this video just out of time constraints, and certainly I'll do a more comprehensive write-up in the coming days on my blog. But one is the more Pacific Future Response Age Defense eye cream. It's the dual cream I talked about in my last video. It's got one for daytime as well as one for nighttime. And I think this is genius. High-end eye creams are not inexpensive. They're actually quite an investment. And while this is at a higher price point, I'm really impressed by the fact that you're essentially getting two eye creams in one. I'm going to continue experimenting with this over the next few weeks, but I just wanted to mention this was one of my favorite eye products for the month of May. Another is the Nude Advanced Renewal Serum. Now I've talked about the Nude Pro Genius Serum since the beginning of the year when I first was introduced to that. And this is their latest product. It is a light serum that doesn't have even the slightest hint of oil and essential oils are part of the nude skincare line aesthetic. But it can be used in tandem with the nude Pro Genius oil. So what I've been doing when I'm sticking with this regimen is putting two or three drops on my freshly cleansed face, letting it soak in, and then following with a drop or two of the nude Pro Genius for extra reinforcements. This is intended to combat fine lines, discoloration, wrinkles, age spots, and just general skincare concerns. And of course the ingredients are pristine as 
is the case with all products in the nude line. I'll definitely weigh back in in the next couple of months as I continue to work with this product, but I did want to mention it's been a favorite for me. And then finally, the Amore Pacific Moisture Bound Lip Treatment, which is something I got at the very end of the month, but I've been using it consistently since getting it. So I think it classifies as a May favorite. This is an extremely impressive lip moisturizer. I am loving the texture. It's clear. It's not sticky. It's only slightly shiny. Actually, it passes the husband test. In, my husband's an avid chapstick user. He uses some kind of lip balm, and he totally will wear this, and he has a major aversion to wearing anything that even remotely implies shiny. So for males and females, and it has no scent. The more Pacific line is infused with green tea and botanicals. I'll be talking more about it in future videos, but I will say that I'm really impressed with how this performs as a lip balm. I battle with perennially dry lips and I have found that this truly does reverse that dryness that is a constant issue for me. So I'll continue working with it. And finally, the makeup category. I'll run through these products as quickly as humanly possible. Let's start with the face. It's no secret that I try foundations like crazy. With regards to foundation, I've talked a lot about the Clay de Peau Cream Foundation in previous videos and blog posts, and I absolutely love it, but I feel like I've talked about it enough to want to focus on something else in this particular video. So as complexion products go, I have gotten a lot of use from the Omero Vixa Complexion Perfector. This is an SPF product. It's considered a BB cream of sorts, and this is in the shade medium. It also comes in a lighter pinker shade. There's only two shades, but it's supposed to adapt to the wearer's skin tone. And I find that this particular shade works really nicely for those in the NC 23 to 27, maybe 30 range. It is light, yet it provides really great coverage. And it does have that built-in SPF. For the sake of demonstration, I'll just pump out a little bit here. But you can see that once you blend it in, it provides fantastic coverage. And it's a dewy, natural skin finish, but it doesn't have any obvious shimmer. You actually have to kind of press this into your skin because it's cushiony at first, and I think it's actually releasing some of the color and some of the botanical ingredients. This has just natural sunscreen, zinc and titanium oxide. So those of you who may have an aversion to chemical sunscreen have nothing to worry about with this. It is an investment product as foundations go, but I am finding myself using it more and more, certainly over this last month, and I think I'll be gravitating it towards it even more so as the summer months approach. So I'm really impressed by this, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it if you've tried it. Oh, and as I mentioned, I actually applied this much earlier today, probably six or seven hours ago. I've been outside all day, didn't use any powder to touch up. I was taking pictures outside in the heat, and while it might be slightly glowy, it really does stay on the face comfortably without sliding off or getting weird. So that's a testament to its lasting power as well. Another May product is the By Terry Tea to Tan. It's a watercolor bronzer, instant double glow. And it has the obviously very liquid, almost brown stain for the tan effect, but it also has this golden, extremely opulent shimmer that you can shake up and mix with the brown liquid. It's just a gorgeous product, and I recently wrote about it on my blog. There's swatches there, I'll provide the link. As by Terry products go, gosh, they never disappoint me. And this is no exception. It gives the most realistic bronze ever. It's just gorgeous on the cheeks, and it stays in place, almost like a stain. But once you stipple it on, and I use a beauty blender to do that, or a face brush that I can just tap it into my contour areas, once you let it dry down, it's it's not going anywhere. So it's lovely. It's a part of the By Terry French Riviera Summer Collection, and I recommend snapping one up if you're able to. Another face product I've been using a lot of in May is the Tom Ford Translucent Finishing Powder. I wear it in shade number two, which is Ivory Fawn. It looks like this. And it is just that, a translucent finishing powder. It doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look chalky. I actually use the enclosed brush and that's rare because normally I like to use my own powder brush, but I find this works really nicely with the formula. And you can just kind of brush it along your area 
where you might have some unwanted shine. And it takes care of it beautifully without having any powder finish. There are a lot of powders that I own and love and I've talked about them in previous videos, but this is fast joining the ranks of those adored formulas. So it is not only a beautiful case, but a beautiful product and I recommend Ivory Fawn for those who are in the NC20 to maybe NC27 skin tone range. It's translucent enough to adapt beautifully. For the eyes, I have been using a lot of the Clay Depot Bohemian Rhapsody Eyeshadow Quad in Peach Brown. And this is what it looks like. I will do a close up on the blog soon. But it has four colors. It's very subtle, yet it has a rich, beautiful effect. There is a satin peach shade on the end here, a pure rich cocoa brown with neutral leanings a champagne taupe right in here, and then a kind of dusty rose peach right here. And I find that I can create a full eye that looks really clean and subtle and restrained in just a minute or two with these four shades. I wore it all day yesterday and I just loved it and I've been using it a lot in the month of May. The last product for the face that I'll be talking about is the By Terry Touche Velite. I talked about it in my last video and this is one of By Terry's premier products. This is considered a highlighting concealer, but it doesn't have traditional illuminating highlighting qualities. It's more of a satin finish highlighter. So you don't have a lot of shimmery action going on. Just here you can see how it just creates a velvet coverage on the skin. And I like to use it down, down my nose and under my brow bones for a kind of highlighting action that's not shimmery. And then under my under eye region to actually conceal darkness. You can also just use it on a spot if you have one. It's just so versatile and I am loving this product. I'm only going to talk about one fragrance this month even though I've used a few and that is the Cartier La Panthère. I hope I'm saying that somewhere in the vicinity of correct pronunciation. This is a newer release from Cartier. It is just it's hard to put your finger on exactly what you're smelling, but there's some sweetness, some musk, a little vanilla, but something kind of oriental and floral about it as well. It's just, it's divine. I love how it smells and I have been using it a lot. What's great about this is it's so versatile. It wears beautifully in cool weather or if you're in a cooler room, but it also wears beautifully in warm weather without getting overwhelming or cloying. And I am really happy to have added this into my fragrance family, if you will. It feels sophisticated and rich and classic, and I implore you to get a sample at minimum. Finally, lips. And I'm going to just talk about a couple of products here because I recently did a new lip color video and I use a whole lot of those lipsticks that I mentioned in the video. I will leave those out for the sake of avoiding redundancy. The first lip product I'll be talking about is the Surat Lip Sleek in Chucho Terre. And it looks like this. It's a beautiful, non-shimmery nude with some slightly lilac leanings. It's a pink nude. It can go on sheer with one application or it actually build some opacity with a couple and this formula is just lovely. I've talked about the Syrah Beauty Lip Sleeks before. Fiswa is another favorite of mine. But the Shusho Terre, it's just such a beautiful My Lips But Better color. And I imagine this seamlessly complementing every skin tone. It's just a gorgeous rendition of a pinky nude. Next up is the Kevin Aquan Lip Gloss in Daliana, which I've had around for a few months, but I've been wearing it a lot in the month of May. It's a baby pink. It has this kind of chubby doe foot applicator. It looks like this, kind of a nude pink. It's kind of like the NARS Turkish Delight, but I think it has more opacity overall and a little bit more beige with the pink. It's just lovely on its own if you're a nude lip color lover over something else to lighten it up. And this lip gloss is delightfully long lasting yet not sticky. So I love Daliana and if you haven't tried this lip gloss formula, this is a great place to start if you like light, light lips like I do. And then finally, 
I'll be talking about the OCC Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics Stained Gloss in in Off World and Dune. Off World is a delicious, shimmering bubblegum pink. Can't say no to that color. And then Dune is a white, yellow, gold that I would never wear by itself, but I like to mix it in with other things. So these stained gloss lip tars are obviously sheerer than their predecessor, just the traditional lip tar. You can see spread out here how they look on the, on the skin. They are more translucent and transparent. They're meant to be a stain that has kind of a gloss feel. And I think in a lot of ways they're easier to wear than the traditional lip tars because those require such precise application and your lips need to be primed. And I don't feel like these dry my lips out. I love that they still have a minty scent. And I like the fact that I can use Dune here as kind of a golden sheen over an existing lip color, but I also can use it as a highlighter. What I like to do once in a while is just take a little bit of Dune and then move it into the area where I want a highlighting effect and it gives that beautifully. Two lovely releases from this month from this particular formula and I recommend them. To close, I wanted to mention that on my eyes I'm wearing a product that I didn't talk about at all in this video because I'm going to save it for my June favorites because I know it'll be there, but preemptively I am wearing the Dark Orchid Kaleidoscope from La Metier de Beauté. It's a limited edition kaleidoscope that will be available exclusively at Neiman Marcus I'm wearing all the shades on my eyes and I put it on much earlier today. You can see there's no creasing. It's just endless, endless possibility in a single kaleidoscope. This is one of my favorite kaleidoscopes. I'm so thankful to have gotten to try it early and I recommend tracking it down at Neiman Marcus if you're interested because this is a limited edition kaleidoscope. And so concludes my May favorites. I truly hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear what your favorite products were in the month of May, and I'd be happy to answer any questions or field any comments you may have. Always, please do not hesitate to visit me at my beauty blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at www.beautyprofessor.net.